welcome sir and everyone over here this is a lecture on information skills and digital information landscape the lecture has been organized by library committee in collaboration with nss committee of shyama prasad mukherjee college for women our guest and speaker for the day is dr rajesh singh he is a librarian in university of university of delhi i welcome you sir thank you thank, thank you, you sir Lavi. thank you sir so um so this i i will just take this opportunity to thank our principal ma'am because of whom we have been able to organize this session i will just invite the library committee convener um dr n lalita to kindly welcome the guest thank you pallavi thank can you. you see me yes yes okay on behalf of the library committee and nss college nss of shama prasad mukherjee college i welcome everyone to this webinar on information skills in digital information landscape it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome our honorable speaker dr rajesh singh thank you sir for sparing your valuable time from your busy schedule thank you also for agreeing to address us at such a short notice the importance of the chosen topic information skills in digital information landscape cannot be emphasized more in the current times the last two years have taught us the importance of information dissemination using various digital platforms this has ensured that <clears throat> teaching learning and research continued with minimal academic loss though a multitude of information sources are available for upgrading knowledge and skills it's imperative to be aware of interdisciplinary database like google scholar or subject specific database for greater reliability of information i'm sure that all of us will gain immensely from today's lecture and will learn a lot about various ways of accessing information suited to our needs i now request pallavi to formally introduce our honorable speaker to the audience speaker ji yes ma'am thank you ma'am mm. so we have our speaker and guest today dr rajesh singh dr rajesh singh is a gold medalist from banaras hindu university varanasi has served various organizations in different professional capacities he has served indian school of mines dhanbad MJP Rohil Khand University Bareilly and Dr RML Awadh University Faizabad before moving to University of Delhi his areas of interest and specialization include information literacy and competency www.resources online information retrieval techniques meta federated searching academic integrity citation analysis databases and research metrics including impact factor and h index etc he has delivered invited lectures and keynote addresses in various national and international seminars conferences workshops orientation courses refresher courses and other faculty development programs he has authored two books and published widely in reputed national and international journals seminars and conferences He is recipient of ILA Gidwani Deshpande Best Academic Librarian Award 2019. It's truly an honor to have you over here, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. And over to you now, sir. Your voices are not coming. Thank you, Pallavi. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for your uh, introduction, generous uh, introduction. about me i on behalf of uh, library profession and delhi university library system i welcome all the participants today here on this uh, uh, lecture online lecture see uh, the topic of the lecture is information skills in digital information landscape right so uh, i i will assume something because we are in uh, uh, online mode we we are not able to interact with each other but 
I know that uh, uh, most of us, we are not satisfied with whatever information we get from our general search engines like Google, Yahoo, and uh, uh, the rest of us, right? Similarly, even uh, whatever information we get for a particular search from a subscribed databases, say like uh, JSTOR, Science Direct, Sage, we are, we are not uh, comfortable with that because uh, the point is we get so much of information, so much of results when we are looking for something very specific, we are getting so much of information, so much of results that it becomes difficult for us to make a decision what to read and what to leave, right? So we, as a user of uh, this digital uh, information, uh, we as a researcher, big or small in this digital world, we need to have a kind of uh, uh, understanding, a kind of skill, and uh, uh, again, a kind of uh, ability to survive in the digital information landscape and flourish academically as well as by, uh, by our research, right? So kindly uh, uh, allow me to share the screen uh, for the lecture today. And then we proceed further. So uh, this is my screen. Just a moment, please. So I, I, I feel that you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Now, can you see this uh, uh, change of slide also? Yes, sir. Is the first one the information skills for digital informational information landscape, right? Only that one. No further changes are visible to you. No. Okay. Just just a moment, please. Uh, Uh, I think uh, we can, please, uh, all of you are requested to mute yourself. All of you, all the participants, kindly mute yourself, right? So what we do, we go by uh, this way only, by changing the slides one by one. Uh, see, we, we are talking about uh, uh, the digital information landscape. So what is the digital information landscape? The digital, uh, the digital information landscape refers to a information environment in which we have a, a larger part of information available in uh, digitally, right? There are multiple uh, platforms, there are multi multiple forms through which uh, we can uh, get uh, that digital information uh, from subscribed resources and from open access resources. Hello. Right? So this uh, digital information is also available in networked environment. So whatever is available worldwide, digitally, 
that is also available in a network uh, environment. So whatever is anywhere in the world, because of this network, we we have uh, almost uh, uh, simultaneous access for a, for a large group of students. <laughs> What is what is this? Please, uh, uh, hello. Okay, so what we have, we have uh, digital information, which is networked, and this information is available in abundance. See, today there is no dearth of information. If you want a piece of information, you have multiple uh, information available to you, which you need to decide uh, what information to use and what to leave, right? So there is no dearth of information. What, what the thing is, there is plenty of information available digitally in the network information environment. So what about the researchers today? See, when I say researchers, uh, we all are researchers, whether you are an undergraduate student, you are a PG student, or you are a research scholar. I mean to say that whether you do a small research, you do a big research or whatever you do, whatever assignments you do, that is also a part of research. So as a researcher, we are information privileged. Why we are information privileged? Because today that information is available to us in plenty digitally with a easy access and retrieval to the information. That is why we are information privileged. Uh, if you talk about uh, 20 years back or 15 years back, uh, the researchers has to move from one place to other place to collect their bibliographic details and to collect the full text of information. Now the things are very easy going and sitting over at any place uh, in the world, you can have access to all kinds of information because this network digital information environment has immersed and where information is available in plenty in abundance, right? So the researchers are uh, information privileged today. And because of this uh, uh, nature of being information privileged, the researchers want access to information which is effortless and instantaneous. They want access to large amount of information, uh, which uh, without making any efforts in terms of finding the reliable, authentic, and uh, relevant information to their query, right? They want information uh, instantaneously whenever they are requiring. So this is a new change in the habit of information seeker as well as the information environment. So what we need to do? Now we need to, now we need to, develop, inculcate certain uh, 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 understanding, certain skills and certain abilities to survive and flourish in this uh, digital information landscape, right? See, uh, everything is fine. Uh, the information is available in plenty uh, with ease and speed, but with all the advantages, with this digital information landscape, there are multiple threats of abuse and misuse of information, right? Uh, use of misinformation and abuse of proper information. Everything is possible. So we need to develop uh, that set of skills and abilities. Now coming to the next slide. So what kind of skills and abilities I'm talking about? These are uh, the set of skills I'm talking about. Information need. The first one is information need. When I say uh, skills and abilities related to information need, that means we should inculcate and we should develop the skill through which we can identify our own information requirement. Now, this may sound absurd to you that I'm saying that we need to develop such skills and ability so that we can 
identify what exactly we are looking for. But believe me, this is a fact. Many a times, even, even uh, 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 the researchers, the scientists, many a times they are not able to identify, they are not able to define what exactly they are looking for, right? So we need skills uh, which helps us to define our own information need as well as the ability to articulate that information requirement to a search system, to a digital uh, platform, to a search system which is integrated with a digital platform. So in this set, uh, we will uh, specifically, I will uh, give you practically, I will show you how we need to identify, how we need to define our information requirement and how we need to articulate that. The second aspect of, uh, aspect of information, which is very important for us, as far as this uh, uh, set of skills and ability is concerned is access. Access to proper, access to precise, access to right information, access to the information which is reliable and authentic is very important, particularly with the abundance of information, which is mostly available in open access, right? So what we need to know, we need to have understanding of the search engines. We need to have uh, uh, understanding of specific search techniques, uh, search formulation, so that we can effectively see if you search for something and if you get so many results, it is not the fault of the search system. It is not the limitation of the search engine. It is rather with the seeker of information. Why? Because we are not able to utilize, 100% utilize the features which are there with the search engine, right? I, I'm sure all of you are using Google uh, uh, search engine and every day, even I do, right? But are you sure that you are using uh, Google search engine with all its feature, with understanding of all its feature, with the understanding of all it, its functionality? No. We are not, right? So we need to develop that understanding. We need to inculcate that skill through which we can properly, precisely access information from plenty of information. See, if you want to find out, if you want to find out a particular piece of information, uh, it is almost similar to finding a needle from the hay, right? So how we can do that? By uh, accessing the information properly. Sorry. The third aspect of information, that is uh, information evaluation, is again very important for us because uh, uh, with the emergence of internet as a medium of information communication, plenty of amateur sites, plenty of uh, commercial sites, plenty of platforms which are promoting view uh, uh, views and uh, viewpoints, plenty of uh, platforms which are selling their products and services, they have uh, come up on the internet and they, have, they make up the majority of information which is available in open access, right? So everything which is available in open access is not academic piece of information. Right? Everything which is available through Google is not reliable and authentic information for academic uses. So what we need to do? We need to assert it. And see, it is, it is a kind of uh, 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 creating your uh, set of mind that whatever information you get uh, in first glance itself, you can identify whether this is reliable information or it is not reliable information. So how we can do that? We need to uh, inculcate uh, those qualities. So how we can do that, how we can evaluate the information, whether this is reliable or not, that we will see. And then information use and information use ethics. See, unless you properly understand a piece of information, that piece of information could be a research paper, a paragraph or a book, Right? Unless you properly understand, 
you won't be able to use that information in a specific context for a particular purpose right that is very important so understanding of information how we can understand and how we can use information ethically because uh, integrity academic integrity and uh, information use ethics plagiarism these are buzzwords today and uh, it matters and in your academic and research career it matters now coming to the next slide i don't know why we are not able to okay so now how to identify what exactly are uh, what exactly is uh, your information requirement how to define your information requirement your information need right so very simple steps are there which uh, which is only for the purpose of your understanding you are not required to do uh, this uh, uh, every time so what we can do see this is for your understanding you can continue uh, practicing this for for uh, months together but uh, once you uh, spend some time uh, by following these steps you will be in a position to find relevant and precise information so the first thing is state what you want to find write down on a piece of paper what exactly you are looking for right so you can find here uh, there are two examples on the uh, screen cognitive architecture of the depressed and the other example is globalization and its impact on the indian working class right so once you have written in your natural languages once you have written what exactly you are looking for we need to find out what are the keywords whatever we have written what are the keywords in that so in those two examples in the first example you find cognitive architecture and the and the depressed these are two keywords right in the second example we find that uh, there are again two keywords globalization and indian working class now uh, some of you may say that even the impact should have been a keyword because that will refine the search that will precisely give you what exactly you are looking for because uh, uh, that will uh, reshuffle out or that will um, not include the results where the term impact is not there fine this is for a purpose of understanding how the system works see we can understand that either impact or effect is a term which is synonymous in meaning we can understand that a document which has the term impact in its title or rather globalization impact and indian working class in the title uh, is our requirement but we also understand that if there is a document which only have two terms globalization and indian working class that will also uh, discuss the impact or effect of globalization on indian working class that that's for sure so what if we are using three terms we will leave all the research papers where this term impact has not come rather the term effect has come or any other term has come or it has not come right because we are finding for three terms three keywords so this impact or effect is an implied term in the meaning this is not the keyword now uh, let us take third example and that example is very simple economic development in india right economic development in india now what are the keywords in this the keywords are economic development and india right so the third example is economic economic development in india and the keywords are economic development and india right so the third step in this process is select the synonyms in variant word forms for what for the keywords which we have identified in the second step we need to find out we need to think and find out whether there are some synonymous terms which might have used which, which might have been used by different scholars and uh, uh, scientists so how how we can do that now let us take the exam third example what is that 
economic development in india what are the keywords economic development and india now think for a while are there some synonymous terms particularly for uh, 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 economic development there are synonymous terms like economic growth and economic progress right now as a general uh, as a general user if we are not trying to define our information requirement so what we do we simply uh, use the search engine and we simply type economic development in india or and in india whatever we want we type right and we get a lot of results we get a lot of results most uh, some of them are relevant some of them are partially relevant some of them are irrelevant right but do you think that your search is comprehensive no the search is not comprehensive so how it could be see when we search for economic development in india or and india we have left unintentionally we have left all those research papers all those documents where the researcher has used the term economic growth or economic progress where when we when we think for our information requirement we we find that economic development economic growth and economic progress are somewhat synonymous somewhat similar as far as the requirement of information is concerned what we need to do we need to identify the synonymous terms if you are not using the synonymous terms you are leaving all those research papers all those documents where the author the researcher they have used the synonymous term rather than the term you are searching for right so please remember for all your such queries synonymous terms play very important role right uh, when we talk about variant word forms there are a uh, singular plurals there are change of spellings so we need to also take care of those things because uh, uh, different spellings and different uh, uh, forms of words would have been used by different scholars and authors now once we have identified different keywords for a particular search so what we have done we have stated what exactly we are looking for in step 1 step 2 we have identified what are the keywords in our requirement step 3 is we have also identified what are the synonymous terms if there are some synonymous terms for the keywords which is part of our requirement right now let us go back to the example economic development economic progress economic growth now these are three terms synonymous terms which we have identified in the given example and the fourth one is india now what we are required to do are we required to search these terms one by one and find information no we are not required to do that so what to do we are simply required to combine all the keywords uh, whether these are anonymous uh, synonymous terms or whatever keywords we have identified in one single search string in one single search formulation right how to do that by using the boolean operators they are very important and they play magical role in 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 searching the information see when i say searching the information i simply mean you can search information using any search engine whether it is open source uh, 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 search engines individual search engines like google or whether they are uh, search engines associated with particular databases uh, and and uh, particularly the commercial database right so what we need to do we need to combine them together and what are the boolean operators the boolean operators are and or not the very simply if you are using the boolean operator not with a term and see the boolean operators are always used in the capital letters so when you are using the boolean operator not with with a term in your search you are simply instructing uh, the search engine that please look for this not for this so that term 
it's excluded from your search results. Say, for example, if you are looking for pets, PETS pets, but if you are not interested in cats, so what you can say, you can search pets, not cats. So not is in cap capital letters. So it indicates that you are interested in pets, but you are not uh, interested to find information on cats. So that information on pets, including the information of cat, uh, on cats, is not provided to you. That information is excluded, which is related to the cats, right? The two other Boolean operators, and or, one uh, broadens the search criteria and the other one limits the query. So which one limits? It is the and which limits because it looks for this and this, where both the concept, where both the keywords are there, that will be searched. Whereas the term or it broadens your query and it looks for or either this or this, where either of the term is there, that will be a part of your results. Say, for example, if you look for uh, Ram and Sita, so what documents you will retrieve? You will retrieve all those documents where the term Ram and Sita both is there, where the term Ram and Sita both is there. But if you look for Ram or Sita, O R or Sita, it will look, it will include, your search will include all the documents where both the term Ram and Sita is there, as well as the document where either the term Ram has been used or the term Sita has been found that will be part of your search results, right? So this is how you can combine you uh, 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 by using Boolean operators. And then uh, the fifth step is to give a context. See, I told you that we are in a digital information environment and the characteristic of this environment is uh, it provides access to abundance of information. It provides access to plenty of information. There's no dearth of information, right? You look for something and you get so many things. You know, when we look, when we search to Google, uh, uh, we, we get hundreds and thousands of results. And you know, one fact, the search engines like Google, and see, the Google is the largest search engine because it has the largest index. The search engines like Google, they, they could only index the 20% of the content uh, which is there on the internet. And that 20% of the content is called free and visible web. Now, rest 80% content is not indexed by search engines like Google. Now, you can, you can imagine uh, uh, the, the amount of information which is available. Out of the 20%, what we get? We get hundreds and thousands of results for our query. So, and see, uh, uh, in a subscribed database, you may not get hundreds and thousands of results, but definitely for a query, you may get uh, uh, thousands of results. And that, that is again very difficult for you because if, when you go to the library, in a physical library, you have one single or you have number of uh, documents in your mind that you want those documents, right? So, see, if you are using Google, you are, Google uh, brings you to the gate of the library where hundreds and thousands of results are there. Then what to do further? So it is better when you are uh, using the search engine, you can decide what exactly you are looking for. So one more, uh, one more way of finding relevant and uh, precise information is Give a context. Say, for example, those who are from sciences uh, attending this lecture, uh, somebody, a researcher, is looking for information on genetic mutation, right? So if you search the term genetic mutation in science directly, you will get hundreds and thousands of results, right? And it is not expected that you will find uh, what those results are there. So. You will make uh, uh, multiple searches. Uh, you will make multiple limitations. One more aspect is if you pre-decide, see, because genetic mutation can take place in human, animal, and plants. And as a researcher, generally, you might be interested in either of them. Either you might be interested in genetic mutation in human 
or animals or plants. So what will be uh, the beneficial way of finding information is at the very beginning, you give, you give a context. I am looking for information on genetic mutation with a context to human, animals or plants, anything. So what if you say genetic mutation and humans, that means all the research papers, all the documents which deals with genetic mutation, but are, but are concerned with animals and plants that won't be part of your result. That will save your time. So this is the way of giving context. Further, see, there is a term called foreign direct investment, FDI, right? So a researcher is looking for information on FDI. Now, how he can fine tune his search query, his search statement. So he need to think he is really interested uh, in information on FDI with context to which geographical location or with a context to which country. Because FDI is uh, almost a, a global phenomenon. It is part of all the countries on the world, of the world, right? So he takes a decision. I'm interested for information on FDI, which is related to India. So what he can do? He can give a context to India. Further, he can give more context. What he can do? He can, he might be interested for information on FDI uh, uh, for India in a particular period. So he can give the period. So if you properly uh, uh, give the context for your search query, you are likely to retrieve uh, more precise and more relevant information uh, which you are looking for. Now, the last step is Check your spelling, proper spacing, and proper punctuation. Friends, please remember, a misspelled word will automatically limit your search only to those documents where same spelling mistake has taken place. Otherwise, you are not going to get any result. Right? So yeah. please be sure that you double check your spellings, spacing, and punctuation if you are using any. Now, Coming to information access, I told you that we are in a period of information overload. There is no dearth of information. We are in a period of, we are living in an age of information overload. So what to do in that? And I told you that uh, 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 we have the free and visible web, which is indexed by the search engines. We have the free but invisible web because that part of web which is free is not being indexed by the search engines because of various reasons. So that is invisible. And then there is third category of uh, information which is on the web that is paid databases, uh, which needs subscription, which needs to be paid and subscribe, right? So how uh, uh, we search or how we access to these uh, uh, information, uh, the, the three category of information, there are three ways. The first is search engines, particularly uh, they are a special kind of programs and uh, there are spiders, it keeps on roaming from one side to other side and it takes an image of each and every uh, web page, it widgets and revisits and it stores that image in the second part of uh, search engine that is called index or database. And the third part is the search software through which we put our query and make the search. Right, I told you that uh, only 20% of the content which is available on the web is free and visible to us. That means that is searchable to us. So what about the rest uh, content which is free? So there are directories, subject directories, subject gateways. They are a listing of internet resources and they, uh, they also provide facility to search and they lead you to quality information which is there on uh, the internet. The third way is uh, uh, called, um, say, meta search engines or federated search engines. These are uh, solutions which provides you single window, federated search, single window search of multiple databases, uh, multiple uh, uh, indexes, which are there, which are available or which are either from open access. Now, what is a search engine? The, the, the question is, what is a search engine? We need to understand that search engine is a tool. 
it is not the content creator it is simply a content facilitator it facilitates access to the content which is there in the database or in the index right and what kind of tool the search engine is the search engine is a tool like all this which you are seeing on your screen now let us take an example of the hammer and the nail friends if you don't know how to put the nail on wall using the hammer properly you are likely to harm yourself right and we we all have uh, a seen uh, uh, some point of time in our life we have harmed ourselves when because uh, that time we were not able to use the hammer properly similarly similar is the case with the search engine today see as a tool if you do not possess skills and abilities to handle the tool called search engine you are harming yourself each and every time you are using the tool it is similar to that so what we need to do is we need to develop the proper understanding of the search engine the search features uh, the search criteria which are there and we also need to use the advanced search features of search engines which we are using we also need to uh, read and understand see with every search engine there is a help menu or there is a guide which we need to read by spending 20 25 times at the beginning and we need to understand and see that understanding will always help you whenever in future you are using that search engine right so please understand the tool learn how to use the tool and then only you properly use the tool that is most important in digital information landscape very very important right now uh, uh there are something like what is a search engine it is uh, these are descriptions of search engines examples uh, so i am skipping uh, uh, these things because uh, i have already told it to you now coming to the important uh, aspect of information access that is how what are the search techniques which can help you to access precise and relevant information so the first is called phrase search when i say phrase search see uh, i mean to say that uh, you can search a piece of information uh, making your query as a phrase when i say making your query as a phrase that means you can uh, uh, search a group of terms a group of uh, keywords together making them phrase to find that all the terms are in the are there and they are there in the same order right so how you can search uh, how you can make a search as a phrase search uh, you can go to the advanced search page of any search engine and you can find uh, a drop down menu or a, a particular window for making a search as a phrase search or even in the basic search page what you can do you can put double inverted comma to a search statement to your search query and by putting double inverted comma you are making your search as a phrase search now why it is important or how, how why how it helps you let me give you some examples see if you are looking for information on haribans rai bachchan we all know who haribans rai bachchan is so when you search and let us take the example of google itself so when you search for haribans rai bachchan you get number of results right results from multiple sites which deals with uh, uh, various aspect of haribans rai bachchan his uh, uh, poems uh, recitation of his poem his biography and so many of thing right so we get information on haribans rai bachchan as well as we also get some information on aswarya rai bachchan amitabh bachchan jaya bachchan and you know why because the term bachchan is common right the term bachchan is common just a moment please
sorry so uh, uh, you know why we are getting when we when we are looking for information on harvan sraya bachchan why we are getting information which is related to amitabh bachchan or any other bachchan because the term bachchan is common in all these names if you look for information on department of justice right through any search engine so you will get uh, results where the term department of justice is there but you will also get results where either the term department is there or the term justice is there if you look for information on william shakespeare you are likely to have some information on william wordsworth right so in all those cases in all such cases and particularly with proper nouns name of individuals associations uh, uh, institutions right we should uh, make a phrase search so when you are looking for a uh, william shakespeare as a phrase you will get information only on william shakespeare when you are looking for harivans the term harivans rai bachchan as a phrase you will get only information on harivans rai bachchan and no other bachchan uh, 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 will come uh, and will be part of your search result so this is uh, you can make a search of phrases not only with proper nouns i gave you the example of genetic mutation in that case also see if you uh, use the database science direct and search for genetic mutation you will find these two terms being there but they are in different permutations and combinations whereas you are looking for genetic mutation and it has a meaning so what you can do you can make your search <coughs> you can make your search as a phrase search so what you will get you will get only those results where the term genetic mutation is together in the same order right now coming to field search this again is very helpful to find a relevant and precise information it helps you to uh, uh, search exactly uh, what is your what is uh, the requirement of in your information now as a information scientist library and information scientist we have decided various fields of information say for example as a as a reader or a, as a researcher i want to read some sonnets which has been written by shakespeare <laughs> So I'm I'm who is this? I come Syria, Syria. Please keep yourself muted. Okay, right. So uh, I want uh, I want to uh, go through some dramas or some sonnets which are written by Shakespeare. So what I can do when I'm searching the information, I can search the see if i know the title that is uh, uh, again i can limit my search title of the drama written by shakespeare i can limit my search to the field called title but if i don't know the title if i am not sure about the title so what i can do i can search the term shakespeare in a field that is called author and you all know that uh, we similarly we can search for the term the keyword as a author as a title as a subject in the abstract uh in the keywords anywhere right we can make a decision depending upon our own information requirement you can make a decision right so if you decide that you want to uh, uh, uh read some sonnets or some uh, dramas by shakespeare search only the term shakespeare as an author so by doing this you will uh, not include the results which are related to the term shakespeare uh in the title in the subject or in any other field and you will limit your search only to the field where the term shakespeare has been used uh, uh as a author right we have already seen uh, the use of uh, boolean operators uh there is one more technique this is called proximity search and this is uh, uh available with a database called jstor so what you can do there in proximity search uh you can identify different terms occurrences of different terms together 
with a proximity of number of words, right? That means you can fine tune the search engine to find out a group of words together with close proximity to each other. And that proximity could be by 10 words, five words, 20 words, like that, or in one line, one paragraph. And this facility is available with uh, the J2. The next uh, uh, technique or next way of uh, accessing information is ko ban kar dije. Accessing information is control vocabulary. Now see, uh, in natural languages, you may not have realized this, but in natural languages, uh, we refer to the same concept in different ways, right? So uh, let me give you an example. We say that it is a book of Indian history. It is a book on Indian history. And the same book can be referred as a book of history of India. So when we say Indian history or history of India, what we do, we refer to the same concept, right? But when we do the same for retrieval of information, it becomes difficult because you uh, means uh, as a, 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 a information professional, we find this difficult because we cannot uh, provide you multiple access points. So what we do, we use the control vocabulary where everything which is used in natural languages that has been controlled, right? So what we do in this particular case, what we do, we say history dash name of the geographical location. So whatever title you give, it doesn't matter. It will come history dash India, right? Similarly, when you are using the search engines, you are likely to uh, encounter uh, the uh, use of control vocabulary. When you search for something and you get suggestion that instead, if you're looking for this, please search for this. So uh, uh, that will help you to that will help you uh, to find more precise and more relevant information. Concept map now they 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 term it as a mind map and it really helps you uh, to find and this this facility is available with credo reference. This helps you to find out different concept related to each other in one single screen. So in undergraduate courses uh, uh, for undergraduate teachers, as well as for the students, the database called credo reference is very important. So I, I, I request, I advise all of you to please visit the website. I will show you how you can access and go through the credo reference. It's a, it's a wonderful database. Uh, particularly, it is a collection of uh, uh, reference sources, which includes the encyclopedias, dictionaries, direct directories, biography, almanacs. So thousands of such documents in a searchable platform is available to you, right? Now coming to uh, a question, question to all of you. So by this time, what you have learned, you have learned that uh, uh, there are some steps which you can use to uh, define and determine your information requirement. There are certain steps, uh, there are certain techniques which helps you uh, to articulate the requirement which you have determined with a search system. Fine. You have precisely done this for a search, any topic, right? And you have got only 200 results for a search because you have followed all the steps uh, you have used most of the techniques which we have discussed. So as a result, you have got only 200 uh, results for a search. Now, are you sure, any one of you, that you would like to just simply read the titles of those 200 results? I'm not sure. I know nobody will do this. If any one of you would like to do this, please let me know. I'm sure we are not habitual of uh, doing like this. So what is the way out? What is the use of this lecture? Now see, once further, there are further refinements, further limitations are there for your search. 
So once you have made a search, you have received not only 200 results, you have received 20,000 results also. What you can do? You can further, as per your information requirement, and see, there is no one else who can ascertain what exactly you are looking for rather than you. So further, once you have made the results, you have found the results, further as per your requirement, you can refine the search, you can limit the search. How? Same. Same example. I'm, I'm looking for uh, information on the term genetic mutation, right? But my interest is I want to read the research papers which are published in particular journals, say cell biology or nature. What I can do? On the result page, I can find the title of the journals and I can limit my search to that journal. What, do I, what, what will I get? Three, four or five results. I'm interested in particular scholar, particular scientist to read his research paper on genetic mutation. I can refine my search by the name of that uh, scholar or scientist, right? So similarly, there are limiters. I can go for uh, 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 publications which are published in a particular year, uh, which are further having uh, context like uh, if you are looking for genetic mutation, you can go for DNA, uh, the further context you can find out there. So there are uh, limiters, there are refinements and these are available with almost all the search engines to find precise and relevant information as per your own information requirement. Right now, coming to the next is information evaluation. So, how we need to evaluate the information? See, I told you that whatever is available uh, uh, from open access, particularly from open access, everything is not authentic, everything is not equally reliable. There are various purposes for which uh, uh, the information is there on the internet. So, what we need to do. We need to develop a practice or we need to de develop an analytical bent of mind, particularly when, and this is uh, 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 true every time, right? This is true for every time. But when, uh, particularly when you are using the open access information, Kavita, but please mute yourself. Particularly when you are using open access information, we need to evaluate it. So on the basis of what? On the basis of these criteria, right? We need to find out what is the authority, who has written the research paper, who is the author, what is the credentials of the author, to what kind of information he is associated, whilst what else he has written in print or online. So we need to find out the authority of the researcher or the author who has developed that web page. We need to uh, establish the accuracy of the language and coverage of the content. Because see, if you are looking for information in a particular concept on a particular content concept, you must have a basic understanding. So find out the accuracy of the content and coverage. And what is the objective? But what purpose that piece of information is uploaded on the web? Whether they want to sell a product, they want to sell a viewpoint, they want to sell a viewpoint or what? So if the purpose is ad academic, that could be a reliable source of information. And then see, internet is, is the fastest medium. So uh, the websites through which you have retrieved a particular piece of information that should be that must be current that must be regularly updated right so this is very important as far as uh, evaluation of information is concerned now coming to information use i told you that unless see what is a research whether it is a big research or a small research what we need to do in in research is we need to borrow information from already existing facts and uh, uh, materials, and then provide a new interpretation uh, or new explanation to already uh, whatever is established. So that is research, right? So what we are required to do, we are already allowed to borrow, but we are required to borrow uh, following some principles. 
following some ways. So what are the ways we are required to borrow? We are allowed to borrow by quoting something. And see, all these have a purpose. When you should quote, when you should summarize, when you should paraphrase. So how we, how we are allowed to borrow? We are allowed to borrow by verbatim quoting something. We are allowed to borrow by summarizing something. We are also allowed to borrow by paraphrasing, rewriting a paragraph in our own language, in our own understanding, right? So rewriting or paraphrasing won't be successful unless you precisely understand the paragraph. Now, let me, let me take you to that slide. So what you can see here is, there is a paragraph which, which has got uh, the original caption, the original, and then there is a paraphrased paragraph below that original paragraph. What does it indicate? It indicates the beauty, the ability of the paraphraser, the ability of imitation. How beautifully the paraphraser has tried to imitate the content of the original paragraph in the paraphrased paragraph. See, paraphrasing does not require your imitation, the quality of imitation. Paraphrasing simply wants your understanding of a paragraph, right? So unless you understand the information, see what we see here, the original at the top and the interpretation of the original in, the, in, in this is what, this is the real understanding of the researcher, not the imitation. So for paraphrasing, we need first to understand what a particular piece of information is there. And only when you are, uh, you have properly understood the information, then only you will be able to paraphrase that information. And you please remember uh, one, the same research paper or the same paragraph uh, could never be paraphrased by different scholars, different researchers uh, uh, sitting at different places in same way. You know why? Because the information which is there in the paragraph uh, will have the understanding of the person who are uh, paraphrasing. They will have the background of the person uh, who are paraphrasing. So the individuals, the differences of individuals, their understanding their language, their background, that will reflect in the interpretation. So it is always to be unique. Now coming to the last one is information use ethics. And uh, 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 more associated term is plagiarism, which, uh, which haunts in the minds of researchers today. See, information use ethics uh, is again part of research, right? Uh, it is something like uh, 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 falsification, fabrication, and plagiarism, right? So use of information or information use ethics are very important, particularly in the digital information landscape. Because if you take something, if you see, it is only the digital information landscape which has made the things very easy to cut, copy, and paste. Whereas similarly, it is only the digital information landscape which has further uh, made it possible to check the similarity from the resources which has been indexed by uh, that uh, so a particular software, right? So how we can uh, be ethical in using the information? See, I have already told you that uh, uh, research, we are allowed to borrow in research and, right? So how we can be ethical, how we can avoid uh, plagiarism, how we can be ethical is we need to be honest. See, you are already allowed to borrow. So what is required? The only thing required is be honest and cite properly. Whatever you are borrowing, cite it. Be organized from the beginning till end of your research because see, if you are not organized and uh, uh, if you misplace some of your research papers or documents which you have collected for your research, that may create trouble to you. That may uh, 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 ultimately lead you to plagiarize. Because uh, if you're not organized, you want to keep track of information from where it has come. 
and if you don't keep track of information from where it has come and if something is misplaced believe me you are going to flagellate so better be organized from the beginning of your research see research could be a big research or a small research i'm not going in that debate but be organized from the beginning till end of your research try to use your own language as much as possible see the major reason for plagiarism is or the similarity is uh, uh, particularly in our country uh, these students i i don't i i i would not like to say about others but these students they feel that their language is not so elegant as that of a particular scholar or as that of a, a particular or or as that of his or her supervisor my friend you are not required to be so elegant even the scholar you are thinking of or the or the supervisor you are uh, thinking of he was in the same boat at your age he had learned what he had learned how to voice his his mind in his or her own language and that you are required to do you are required to learn how you should voice your mind your ideas in your own language so language is a big issue uh, a big reason for plagiarism so work on the language and believe me there is nothing impossible even the term impossible says i am possible properly quote paraphrase and summarize remember quoting paraphrasing and summarizing should never be used as an ornament to your research paper to your research document all these uh, must serve a specific purpose in your research report right this is not for ornament so please find out why why you should quote something why you should paraphrase something why you should summarize why what is the purpose but it must serve a purpose that should be evident to the examiner as well as the reader why you have used a particular quote or a paraphrase or a summary right learn the citation formats use the citations format correctly and one single citation format right and check the similarity of your research document before submitting the same for publication this is very important because uh, uh this will help you to avoid all unintentional similarities which may have crept in in your research document now uh there are two ways of uh, accessing the information see uh if you may means uh, time is very short uh, so i have not uh, included but i would like to briefly tell you uh delhi university library system provides access to large uh, 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 chunk of information which you can access from a site called uh, it is crl crl dot du dot ac dot in so what you can get there you can get all uh, uh, the 35 databases which we are subscribing and 14 databases which is available to us from infilibnet all those databases you will get a, a a to z list you will get the e library and you know what is the url of e library it is a uh, uh, t u e library dot in d is small d u e library dot in it's a it's a, a wonderful tool wonderful a platform which provides access to all the subscribed as well as 1.5 million open access resources from anywhere any time any device even your uh, smartphones uh, it can become a tool for you to read something uh, academic on on go any from any place so how you can do that we have developed uh, mobile apps for uh, windows and uh, apple both both type of phones and these mobile apps are available on uh, play stores 
du e library download it use your credentials if you are already having id and password of computer center du cc say uh, like uh, abc at the rate du.ac.in you are uh, automatically you are authorized you can put your id and password there and you can access everything in otherwise case you can take a uh, uh, membership from uh, us you can send us a mail and we will be happy to provide you the membership then uh, uh, um, as a college you have access to enlist enlist resources that we don't uh, uh, have access to as a university they, we are not allowed to access the resources which is part of enlist but uh, see all the journals which are part of enlist is also accessible to us but uh, uh, you are additionally uh, having access to i think uh, 200000 or more uh, 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 e books uh, which is basically related to undergraduate courses different undergraduate courses so best of digital learning best of uh, uh, understanding the digital uh, information landscape and good luck for uh, your research uh, academic research thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much sir as you had rightly noted down in the starting that it's like a finding needle in a haystack and you had very well explained us all the steps we really thankful to you that you had explained us a detailed description of how to go about research how to do a meaningful research in an area where we have abundant information and finding precise information for that thank you so much sir uh, i will open now for question answers if any one of you have any questions you can either write down in the chat box for sir to answer them and uh, um if you have any questions you can please write down so uh, sir should i just read the questions from here yeah oh, please yeah okay so there is a question by navya gaur uh, she asks how can we use library for other colleges or other subjects which is not in our college not ebook see uh, uh, there is a service called delnet you are not required to go anywhere but if your library is part of delnet you can you you have a uh, 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 access to all the print resources of uh, other libraries which are there in delhi so you should talk to your college librarian find out whether uh, your library is part of delhi in a otherwise case as a user of information you can walking to any of the library and you can consult it you won't be allowed to uh, uh, get the book issued but you can consult it but always advisable is use the facility called delnet and i i believe that almost all the colleges they are member of delnet so you can find a book in any of the libraries which are there in delhi ncr and even beyond this and you can request a book on interlibrary loan and that book will be brought to you without any expenditure to the uh, uh, students that will be given to you by your library as if that book was in your library collection um thank you sir uh, so anyone else who has a question you can please write down in the chat box i will read your questions for sir to answer any of the participants if you have any questions you can please write down in the chat box so there uh, there not any uh, okay so there's one more question um, sir gunjan asks can we get those link that sir mentioned in last yes yes you can you can you can talk to your librarian she is uh, competent enough and she can guide you that is not a big issue you you uh, speak to dr bhavna and she will help you uh, uh, in all such respect um any more questions from the participants can be please written in the chat box if there's any more questions you can please hurry up and write so that we can ask sir okay sir i think there are not many questions now so this was the last question okay there are no more questions here in the chat box okay 
um okay so so we have um we have our librarian um our college librarian miss bhavna singh ma'am and mm. we also have our program officer ma'am anita kumari ma'am uh, our program officer of nss um i would like to invite them for a vote of thanks i would like to invite bhavna ma'am for a vote of thanks very good afternoon to all am i audible yes ma'am you audible yes ma'am so once again very good afternoon to all myself bhavna singh librarian shyam prasad mukherjee college on behalf of the library committee and nss committee i am thankful to our principal ma'am professor sadhna sharma for all her encouragement and support for this program thankful to the speaker dr rajesh singh sir who spared time for us to enlighten us with very useful information and we are thankful to administrative officer mrs minakshi mittal for all her support thankful to mr sarabjit singh and mr johnny birla and his team for all technical support we are thankful to ms pallavi manchanda for conducting the event very smoothly thankful to all library staff persons who all worked very hard to promote the event and we are also very thankful to nss students for all their efforts for this event all persons who were directly or indirectly involved in the event we are thankful to them thankful to all the participants for their participation in this event to make this event a big success once again i thank all of you for being part of this event and making it a big success thank you so much to all thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you very much पल्लवी थैंक यू सो मच सर आपका पार्टिसिपेशन बहुत अच्छा ना मैं गई थी ड्यू लेकिन मैं आपसे बात नहीं कर पाई तीन चार दिन पहले गई थी मैं किसी कलीग के साथ सर मैं पल्लवी मैं चाह रही थी कि सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का बोल दे कि अपना वीडियो ऑन कर ले ताकि हम सर के साथ फोटोज ले सके हाँ जी सर ये बहुत जरूरी है सर ठीक है ठीक है तो आई विल जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट ऑल दार्टिसिपेंट्स टू स्विच ऑन दैमर so most of the participants are there now yes sir please click okay done thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir i thank all the participants who have participated here i will be just sending the feedback form over here in the chat box kindly kindly submit the feedback form i will be just sharing it in a minute please make sure that you fill the feedback form that is necessary for us for further understanding so please um, submit the feedback form i will be sharing it in a minute thank you so much everyone All of you are requested to kindly fill the feedback form. It is shared in the chat box. <laughs> 